Morning, everybody. This is Doug Pinter on Daily Energy. I got my buddy Steve Minear with uh, Stanley Steamer in house. What's up, dude? How's everybody doing? Well, I'd be better if I was on a golf course. We right. were just talking. We were looking out the front window of the studio downtown here, and the sun's shining, and there's not a cloud in the sky. And beautiful outside. Oh man, it's gorgeous. Finally, we're getting some nice weather. And we're People. stuck inside. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll be outside this afternoon. Uh, hopefully swinging a golf club this afternoon. And uh, what do you got shaking later on and today? Just uh, trying to get caught up with all the, the jobs that are coming in. We've, we've had a big influx of uh, different fire damages coming through. Um, weather's warming up, so a lot of people are wanting to get a lot of spring cleaning started and kicked yeah. off, you know, and, and not be behind the game. So uh, those jobs are starting to funnel in and, and things are definitely staying busy. We're going, to, we're going to talk about those projects, some of the specials uh, yep. that Stanley Steamer is currently offering. And I want to highlight uh, what you guys did for my good friend Rocco, yeah. whose shirt you're wearing. We'll talk a little bit more. Uh, well, let's just hop right into uh, uh, sports, and then we're going to cover Rocco's big day yesterday. Hold on, my notes are flying out of here. <laughs> Uh, and then we'll talk uh, a little bit about Stanley Steamer and some yep. of the services you offer. How about a $100 million contract for five years? Would you take it? In a heartbeat. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Matt, and that is what Matt Ryan did with the uh, Atlanta Falcons. I just saw that this morning come across the ticker. And you mentioned that is the uh, highest sum a quarterback has been paid, correct? Yep, I, I believe so. Um, so, you know, there's going to be a few other quarterbacks out there that are going to be uh, asking where their money's at now. So. Did you tune into the draft last week and check out who the Bears are? Who, who do you follow in football? I, I was born and raised in Colorado, so I'm, I'm a Colorado fan all the way around. So, you know, I'm real, real happy with uh, Chubb coming into to the Broncos. It'll line up opposite of uh, Vaughn Miller, and I think that's going to sprout that defense back up to, to where it was a couple of years ago. So that'll be really interesting. Spoken like a true Broncos fan. They don't have a shot in... Take a guess. Uh, I'm just kidding. I don't know much about the Broncos, but I am excited that uh, some of the free agents are getting re-signed and we are yeah. talking about football. As crazy as it sounds, it's only three and a half months away. Yep, uh, count down the days. And I know the NFL's meeting, talking about maybe doing away with the uh, initial kickoff and everyone starts at 25, all sorts of different things to talk about there. But let's uh, not get wrapped up in that. Let's hop <laughs> into the NBA Finals. NBA Finals, I've been watching more and more NBA the last couple of years. I find the Finals is typically when I tune in. Uh, these boys are big and they're playing physical. Have you been watching any of the games? Uh, I've, I've caught a few of them um, here and there, you know, definitely, you know, with Golden State and, and yes, Curry Steph coming Curry came back, back and, and had a heck of know, a game the other night. How are you going to go up against them and, and vote up against that? But then you got the opposite end, you know, you got uh, LeBron James basically carrying that team on his shoulders and trying to oh, push man. through and, you know, Toronto choking and, and, could have easily been up 2-0 and instead of being down 0-2 right now. Yeah, I know the the last game they had a couple of plays right at the rim with five, six seconds left, uh, one of those goes. And I mean literally that ball was on the rim. So uh, when we talk about the NBA, we got uh, Houston Rockets against Utah. That series is tied 1-1. Uh, Harden and the boys came out game one and laid a smackdown on them. Utah rebounded yep. even without uh, Rubio. Uh, in the in the lineup running the offense. So uh, did you happen to see there's a lot of talk on Sports Center and around uh, online about James Harden slapping the phone out of that guy's uh, hand? Yeah, I caught a little bit of that. Um, you know, they were saying that he wasn't directly trying to hit the guy, but yeah, you know. So uh, I was watching uh, Sports Center this morning, and Michelle Beadle said it best. It's almost like Twitter came live right there. Right, Harden's coming out. This guy's heckling him. Harden knocks the phone out. It's all caught on video. Now there's uh, that gentleman saying, you know, Harden assaulted him and attacked him. When actually the verbal uh, assault started with that gentleman leaving his seat, yep. going to an area he was not was not reserved for him, uh, heckling the player that knocked the phone out of his hand. I can't blame James Harden. He's got a job to do, and you got people in your face all the time. And if you're going to talk smack and have a phone right there. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's might not the, be the best example yeah, stuff for the kids. Now I'm talking kind about of a it, catch but twenty two, but I, you can't blame the guy. I'm surprised something didn't just come out of his beard and grab that phone and <laughs> take it back in. So Houston and Utah tied one one. Then we were talking a little bit about Pelicans and Golden State. Golden State uh, leading that series two zero. Uh, Toronto and Cleveland. Cleveland up zero two. Hey, you know what? Uh, 
with LeBron James, I have not been his biggest supporter. Um, I just disagree with how he went from team to team trying to build right. it and then point fingers when things weren't going well. But I think he was pretty classy when Popovich's wife uh, passed away. And the reporter asked him uh, the question uh, about Pop's wife. And LeBron responded on air, uh, that post-game interview uh, on the court. And then, you know, I was taken back. I'm like, why would she ask him that question in this scenario? Poor timing. Yeah. And LeBron actually in post game, I was tuned in for that, actually came to her defense. She actually asked him off camera if she could ask that question about Pop and his wife and if LeBron would want to say something. And so she gave him a heads up and LeBron gave him, uh, her the nod to, yeah, go ahead and ask that. So LeBron's answer to that question was extremely classy. Right. And then sticking up for that reporter just to clear the air yep. uh, was classy. He's had great performances. He's putting the team on his back. But will he be in Cleveland next year? See, yeah. I doubt him. I doubt They're, they're going to have to push a lot of money out there to help him out, I think, in order to get him to stay. So, And then the other thing is, is you know, if he goes all the way to the finals and loses the finals, are they going to sit there and make an excuse and say that he's been tired out because he carried the team all the way, you know, to that point? And is that the reason why they lose it? And, you know, is he going to say, hey, if I had a good supporting cast, we could have easily won that. But I'm going to go somewhere that's willing to, to put out the money to get – Get me some other people that can uh, help carry the team. You definitely know if they don't win the NBA Finals, which I don't know if they will or not. They got a great shot. I think uh, them and Boston will meet. Um, one of those two teams will get into the uh, Finals. Speaking of which, 76ers are down 0-2 to the Celtics. How about uh, Celtics Boston? came back on a run last night. Hey, Sharble ran TC out there. Ran TC Law. Thank you for uh, taking 76ers last night, <laughs> and Boston went on a roll. I'm back, baby. Uh, so, hey, tonight's game, Golden State and the Pelicans. Uh, Golden State is favored four and a half on the road. That speaks volumes. I think the Pelicans have a great team. They're a, another role player shy of being a true contender for right. the finals. Uh, a lot of big boys on that team. So Golden State minus four and a half. I think they cover that spread tonight. Right. Houston and Utah. I think Houston will come out and just lay lay a thumping on Utah. Again, with Rubio out, not running the offense uh, for Utah. I do think, you know, with Harden and Paul and the boys, uh, there's just too much firepower there. I agree. Uh, and I think Houston will uh, take the series lead 2-1. to one. Um, Hey, I do want to uh, talk a little bit about our friend Rocco. Let's brag on <sighs> some awesome people. Uh, that I got to cross paths with uh, this last week, especially yesterday. I want to give a huge shout out to the Peoria Chiefs. Thank you so much uh, to everybody at the Peoria Chiefs organization. Uh, top to bottom, everyone was awesome. Yesterday, what they did is they held a press conference. They signed our good friend Rocco Johnson to a one-day coaching contract with Peoria Chiefs. And after the press conference, we were able to tour the locker room, the weight room. Uh, all of the players took time to shake Rocco's hand, introduce themselves. The coach, Coach Chris, hats off to you, sir. You are a class act, my friend. Uh, Jason Mott, the GM. Jason, thank you. You, were, uh, you took time and visited with, with me and the family and to help coordinate this. What a special day for Rocco. Got to go on the field, throw out the first pitch. Let's play ball. I mean, the Peoria Chiefs organization, we just can't say thank you enough. Jason Mott is doing some great things. He's the GM there. We were talking last night. Uh, he's got some children. I have twins. And we were talking about peanut allergies. And he's actually done a, a peanut-free night at the ballpark to where yep. they actually go through, scrub everything down. There's no peanuts uh, on counters or being interchange with any other food and it's a peanut free allergy evening at the Peoria Chiefs. I think uh, Jason mentioned they're going to do five or six of these throughout the season. I know my kids are both allergic to peanuts so I appreciate Jason and the Chiefs you know thinking ahead and outside right. the box on how to bring awareness to some other items going on. Uh, so Jason thank you. Uh, there's a young lady by the name of Kate Voss uh, in sales. Kate thank you for taking time out uh, to just make sure everyone was having a great time. 
Uh, she's just such a smiling face. She's from Henry, Illinois, and she loves her job over there at the Chiefs. Patrick Walker. Uh, Patrick is the Director of Entertainment and Community Relations. Patrick, when I reached out to the Chiefs organization, you said yes right away. It was a no-brainer, and uh, then you took it to your people and the agenda that you laid out yesterday for Rocco and his family, and that's the cool thing. They included his entire family. There were about 100 Rocco ninjas there to support him with that's our awesome. shirts on. Um, I mean, the list goes on with the Peoria Chiefs. Nathan, Director of Media and Baseball Operations. I got to sit in on the MILB show that he uh, does for the Peoria Chiefs, and we got to plug the foundation. And the Peoria Chiefs yesterday are donating uh, 30 or 35 percent of the ticket sales back to the Front Nine Foundation. That money will be used to help the Johnsons pay medical bills and a new cast for Rocco's uh, foot. They're doing a live auction through the weekend. Uh, Piscotti, when he was in town uh, last year, has signed some jerseys. There's a Piscotti jersey up there. There's an entire bat signed by the team uh, wow. in a ball. So. If you uh, want to help out the Front Nine Foundation and the, the Johnson family, my good friend Rocco, right. our good friend Rocco, uh, check out FrontNineFoundation.com. Head over to the Peoria Chiefs uh, page. Check out the auction items on there. And uh, if you feel so inclined, please place a bid on one of those items. It'll go to a great cause. Uh, MILB, gentleman from New York, uh, Vince, thank you. Uh, appreciated your time yesterday and getting to share our story and uh, I can't wait to see what the MILB does and hopefully a couple MLB teams uh, got to meet a past player from the 96 World Series he was the assistant coach on the opposing team's uh, uh, bench and uh, he took pictures with Rocco and all sorts of things the team the opposing team last night uh, West Michigan what a class act they were they uh, brought in autographed items for Rocco, oh, a cool. jersey, uh, a World Series picture with that uh, gentleman, Mariano, that he autographed for Rocco. Just everyone renewed my faith in humanity this past week. I've had a great week. I hope all of you are having a great week. Uh, surround yourself with positive people and good things will happen. Uh, Juan Yepes yesterday, he just got voted uh, in the St. Louis Cardinals organization Player of the Month. He's batting like four something. He's a flat beast. He went opposite field last night off the wall. Looked like a routine fly ball that just kept going. Just when he come down. crushes the ball. Last night was an entertaining game. I think the final ended up, uh, yeah, 10-5. Chiefs took that ball game. Couple dingers in the game uh, last night. Denton hit his second of the season. Montero, his third. Winning pitcher, Gilroy. Uh, three and one with a 2.67 ERA, but let's get back to Juan Yapez. Uh, he was playing first base last night. On my sheet here, it shows he's batting 439. I mean, this guy is just a beast. And you know what's cool? He's 20 years old. He's taken online courses, still continuing his education. And he was one of, I mean, everybody. Uh, Taylor, I met a gentleman by the name of Taylor. He played third base last night. He, he was really cool. And Juan took a lap with Rocco. <laughs> Rocco couldn't finish the lap, uh, uh, obviously. Right. And uh, Juan tossed him up on his shoulders and carried him uh, into the clubhouse. It just, it was awesome. That's cool. It was a great day. If you want to find out how you can support Rocco, uh, go over to the FrontNineFoundation.com. We got pictures of this rock star. He was in the paper. I was getting messages this morning. Uh, it's just great to see the community. Thank you to all my friends family, people I've yet to meet that have reached out and are uh, helping just with time. Right. Uh, we're asking for people's time to spend with Rocco. Rocco uh, has cerebral palsy, and our goal is to educate others on cerebral palsy and how it affects Rocco and his family and others with the, that disease. Right. Or challenge, I should say. Um, and he's just... You got to spend some time with us. <laughs> yeah, we did. Let's talk about what Stanley Steamer and you guys did over at Rocco's. So I'm, um, you know, we went over there. I believe it was uh, Tuesday, um, and you know, we had the intentions of going over there and, and cleaning some stuff for him and letting him help out. And uh, man, 
That kid, uh, he, he's got some energy and he has got a personality that is, is unbelievable. Um, Did he have his boss man name tag on? No. So we actually, uh, you know, we uh, shout out to Jones Trophy. They, they got us a, a T-shirt for him. Uh, yeah. So he had his own Stanley Steamer T-shirt with his name, you know, imprinted on there the side of it. Right there. Yep. Um, he's and, taking your job, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Probably does it better. So, um, <laughs> you know. Look at how happy he is. Though. Yeah, I mean, he had a blast. The guys, like I, I think I was telling you, you know, Wednesday, um, I, I swear the guys probably got more out of it and, and enjoyed it more than he did, and I know he had a great time. Um, they ended up cleaning some carpet and furniture and some other things, but just interacting with him, um, you know, definitely brings life out in other people besides, you know, um, the guys went over there, had a blast, uh, you know, his mom appreciated it and had fun, and, and it was just an overall good time. My understanding, Mark, who owns Stanley Steamer, is a very good friend of mine. Look at that. You guys made uh, a banner yeah. for him. Yeah, the Home guys uh, did some, some arts and crafts while they were there with him, and yeah. You know what? That's who Stanley Steamer is right there. That, that's just cool people helping others right there, and you guys do a hell of a job while you're doing it. Uh, I know you were slated for like two, three hours, and you were over there all day. Yeah, the guys got there at like eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, you know, Rocco wasn't up yet, and uh, which wasn't an issue. He's so. probably filing paperwork oh, the night man. before. Rocco is you. a busy man, everybody. <laughs> I mean, he had the here. Let's tell you what he had last week. IHOP of yep. Peoria was so kind; they did a dine uh, and donate, so they donated money. Chiefs game. I didn't get to bed till about midnight last night. He was going to join us on the show, <laughs> but when I spoke to his mom, Tori, this morning, uh, they're going back to the Chiefs game. They're having him back tonight. Oh, wow. Uh, so we thought maybe a little rest would be good. Yeah. He got a behind the tour scene, uh, a behind the scene tour with the Peoria Zoo and the giraffes. His mom was telling us about that. I'm, I'm jealous of him getting to go behind the scenes with the zoo it sounds like that was a blast so and the children's museum had a sense uh sensory night uh that they invited the johnson family out for and they said it was awesome so rocco's had a super busy month he's coming on the show uh this month uh, in a couple of weeks yep. when you're back on what did you learn from rocco man i mean um you know and i, I think the guys were talking to tori a little bit about this but you know even with all the challenges that he has in his life um he's not about letting that set him back and you know he's an inspiration to to everybody that that I've met that has met him you know he uh he definitely wakes up every day with with figuring how he can push himself further and blow by other people with with his energy and his attitude um you know a little shy at first but once you break that bubble whoo Man, he is, he's, he's a blast to be around. He's a good kid. Yeah. I, t I uh, talked to him that night yeah. uh, when you guys were over there and, and his mom. And they're just so grateful uh, for you guys and for everybody that uh, gets involved behind Rocco's Ninja. Yeah. And to wear the short shirts and to just, you know, to write the check is the easy thing. It really is. But to carve time out of your day uh, may be a challenge. But when you get there, I I'm mean, you. yeah. So, so what's one thing that Rocco left with you? It's just his attitude on life in general. Um, you know, from get to go, you know, he he was constantly smiling and having a good time. Yeah. You know, it just that overall attitude about life was was amazing. I know uh, Rocco talking about what Rocco's done this last month. He also had a pretty big doctor's appointment to see the progress of uh, his left leg yep. and uh, how that is progressing. And uh, they have some work to do, uh, some challenges ahead of them. But like you mentioned, Rocco will face that with a smile Damn. and great attitude, and that will get him through. And he knows uh, our community, Peoria, Dunlap, Bartonville, uh, surrounding communities, Morton, uh, other states are starting to reach out supporting Rocco and it's it's really cool to see how this young man leaves such a lasting impression on so many and teaches so many about cerebral palsy and that was the goal from day one when Tori posted about Rocco was challenging to educate others on cerebral palsy and man he's reached uh, I know online over 50,000 people already and the MILB is covering uh, Rocco's story very closely. Uh, again, it's really cool that the Peoria Chiefs yesterday 
Uh, thank you very much. Can't say it enough. You guys are awesome, and I'll be back to the ballpark before too long. Thank you to the entire Chiefs organization for stepping up huge to the plate. Uh, let's talk a uh, little Cub Cardinals. We got that <laughs> starting up this weekend. I know you're a Colorado fan. Yep. Uh, we split very cordial series. Yeah, it was you very nice. One, we took yeah. one. We went to your house, took it. You came We came here and, and took it. So, you know, both have very nice stadiums. And I yeah. know uh, tonight's starting pitcher for uh, the St. Louis Cardinals, Miles Mikolas. I hope I said that right. His big pitch is a sinker, um, also known as two seam fastball. Uh, he's 21 year old. He has thrown a 102 mile an hour pitch. That's the highest velocity pitch of 2018. Listen to this stat. He owns nine of the top 12 fastest pitches in the MLB this season. And uh, Cardinals manager Mike Matheny quotes, uh, if you've got it, flaunt it. Bring the heat. Uh, this guy's got it and he will be bringing it tonight when they take the on the Chicago until somebody Cubs. Hits it. Uh, so uh, here's what some of the players say about uh, Mike's uh, sinker. Uh, gentlemen, the Mets third baseman looked at uh, the catcher, Molina, after uh, a swing and a miss, and he said, oh, man, good to be young again. And he <laughs> recalled striking out uh, against Hicks' big league de debut, and he went back and he goes, look out, guys, that's not fair. What the hell is that pitch all about? So uh, at this young gentleman that uh, is into the MLB scene, is taking full advantage of his opportunity and good for him good for the cardinals cardinals are in second place in the division cubs are in third so this could potentially get the cubs ahead or create a little space uh between right. the cardinals and the cubs you know the cardinals started off the season playing cincinnati reds a couple times and they took care of business uh the brewers in the nl central are still holding strong first place up there uh, let's talk about jose quintana he is starting for the cubs uh, his go-to pitch is the curveball uh, the curveball, he uses it sparingly. He kind of keeps it in his back pocket. He's got an array of pitches. Uh, he favors fastball, slider, cut fastball, split finger, and a changeup. Uh, this curveball, he only throws about 2 or 3% of the time of his total pitches, but it's the pitch that gets the players out. He'll, yep. he'll rely on that in a key situation. Um, the Brewers catcher uh, said he was batting against them in the last series. I was never expecting him to throw that pitch. He was sitting on a fastball. Uh, he just threw that one pitch all day, right? That was a question. Uh, he couldn't believe it. I was ready for a two-seamer in or a slider away, and he threw that to me, went down looking. I mean, just filthy stuff these guys have. It's just nasty. I was watching a couple of the Chiefs pitchers last night warm up, and these boys are just hauling that ball and popping the mitt down there. Uh, at, a, at a rapid rate of about 95 to 96 mile an hour. Uh, and then you throw a, a change up or a curve like that yeah, at 72. It. I mean, how do you keep up? Uh, let's talk a little bit about standings over in the AL. You got the Red Sox, they're uh, playing some good ball. They got a couple key players back in the lineup. So Red Sox leading that, yep. Cleveland Indians. Zach McAllister got in to pitch against the Cubbies uh, last week. Cleveland is leading that division. Uh, we have the Braves over in the NL. Uh, we got the Brewers and then the Diamondbacks. Uh, ooh, yep. above your Rockies, buddy. Diamondbacks you... are hot right now. They, they've got the pitching going on. So, Hey, what do we got going on tomorrow? We have the Kentucky Derby. The Derby. All right, let's get this up. Do you know any of the horses? I can cheat. This is the first time I'm <laughs> taking a look at this. Nope. Dang it. Jeff and Brian, I wish I was down there. My wife's off in California laying around by a pool. Good for her. She deserves it. Sorry we couldn't make the Derby this year. Looks like uh, odds on favorite that I can see at 3-1 to one is Justify. Justify. Yep. Then coming in uh, second with a 5-1. to one. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. It's, uh, well, what the heck. Mendel Sohan. I'll get the next one with Magna Moon. Oh, thanks for <laughs> stepping in on that. Magna Moon is sitting at 6-1. to one. Uh, Bolt Doro uh, sitting at eight to one, as, as well as Audible. I think Mike wasn't Mike calling Audible from the. God, God, is that you? What did you say? That's my horse. That's oh, that, horse. that's his horse. All that's, right, God is going for everyone. The voice just came out of the ceiling. I I gotta get it to OBT and put a bet down on Audible. All right, it's a message from right. God, everybody. And then Vino Rosa sitting twelve to one. Then we got. Uh, and let's, there's a huge jump. Yeah, then we uh, hop into 30 to 1, 50 to 1. So let's talk about the 50 to 1s. 
Uh, Frenzy Fire. Frenzy Fire, Lone Frenzy. Sailor. Uh, we got Combatant, as well as Bravazo. And Installed Regard. Now, I understand there was a horse uh, that had to pull out uh, late last minute. He was up towards one of the contenders. So this is, uh, I love tomorrow. I just found out a couple of years ago they raced like 13 races that day. I thought it was just the one. So yep. uh, everyone, hopefully nice weather down there. The track will be dry and fast. See what these horses can do. I just want to go down there one of these years just to see everybody in their, their attire. Just the way that everybody dresses up for the Kentucky Derby is, is uh, definitely interesting. Yeah. yeah, everyone will get their high heels and hats and all sorts of yeah. things on for Kentucky Derby. Who are you taking? Mm, I have no idea. Uh, we'll go with the one that we can't pronounce the name with uh, the five to one, the the Mendel whatever, Mendel Uh I can't I, argue that. I, uh, I don't know. I'm going to go with God and call you're Audible. Gonna, you're going to go with the uh, Audible? We're taking Audible. All right. So uh, we'll see how that pans out. Hey, uh, uh, Steve Minear with Stanley Steamer in-house. Uh, wearing his Rocco's Ninjas uh, shirt. If you want to support Rocco and his mission, head over to the frontninefoundation.com. You can find a link to order a shirt. We do have a business that is matching donations. Shirts are just 15 bucks. All proceeds go to the Johnson family to help offset bills. And a company is matching dollar for dollar per shirt. Uh, so I think we sold somewhere around 125 or 150. Yep. We're going to have some seasonal shirts uh, for Thanksgiving and Christmas as well. Uh, so get over to frontninefoundation.com, get one of these Rocco's Ninja shirts, and don't just wear it. Take a picture, send Rocco a message. You can email him at Rocco's Ninjas. Uh, if you head over to the frontninefoundation.com, uh, you can find all of that info there to drop your pictures, drop messages to Rocco, let them know you and your friends support him. Even if you don't have a Rocco's Ninja shirt, reason we went with that shirt, he loves Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, and green that. is the national color of awareness for cerebral palsy. Add modeling to your job now, Steve. That was got solid. It. Let's talk about your specials you got rolling over at Stanley Steamer. So real quick, uh, before I jump into that, I want to give you a special thanks uh, coming directly from Mark Hoagland himself. Uh, for everything that you've been helping out with with the the Dunlap Golf Tournament for the the high school boosters, yeah, um, you know you've been helping us you know get different sponsorships and a bunch of other stuff. So I want to throw that out directly from Mark to you uh, for all the help that you've been. He said you know you've you've been a huge blessing with it. So thank you. Oh yeah yeah uh, yeah. As far Even as Dunlap, happy yeah. to help. As far as specials, jump into those real quick. Um, you know springtime's coming. Obviously, you know, everybody's going to want to get that spring cleaning done. So, I mean, there's tons of different specials that we offer all the time. Um, you know, there's always a 10% going, you know, if you want to get your, your furniture clean. We've got the, the buy one, get one half off. Uh, so if you do a sofa, you can get a love seat or a chair uh, for half price. Uh, areas specials where if you do two areas for $99, three areas for $129. Two areas in a hall for 119, uh, different things like that. So we always got specials going on. Uh, if you just give one of the lovely ladies down at the office a call at 692-1990 uh, uh, and ask them for the best price, they'll they'll definitely do whatever they can to help you guys out. StanleySteamer.com as well to book yep. your appointment. And uh, I know I spoke with the Johnson family after you guys were there. Said all the, I mean, you guys did everything. Yeah. Thank you. You really helped them. Uh, Tori said her house looks brand new again. Uh, the furniture, I think they have a dog over there. So yep. I got all that pet hair up and I saw a picture of Rocco vacuuming the ottoman. Uh, and so they send their thanks uh, for going over there, taking the time and, and just making a difference in Rocco's life. Like I said, literally at the end of the day, it was our pleasure to actually get to spend time with him. So, If you or your company want to get involved and spend some time with Rocco and uh, learn a little bit more about cerebral palsy, frontninefoundation.com. Steve Minear with Stanley Steamer in-house. My name's Doug Pinner on Daily Energy. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Have a good one. Thanks, man. Not a problem. Appreciate Thank you. Peorialife.com.